Amen. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We ought to praise him. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. Let's praise him this morning. Praise him. You at home, come on. Praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Let's sing it together. Come on. Praise him in the morning. Praise. somebody say it's a new season and it's a new day just for a moment come on a fresh anointing is flowing my way it's a season of power and prosperity oh, oh. it's a new season Declare that. And it's coming to me. One more time. Before we start our worship, come on. Say, it's a new season. Everything is new, y'all. And it's a new day. Fresh anointing. Yeah. It's flowing my way. It's a season of and prosperity yeah. and it's a new season coming to me you gotta speak that thing come on say it's a new season and it's coming to me i receive it this morning say it's my new season
make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord all ye lands, come into his presence with singing, into his courts with praise. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. This morning, as always, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is called the Christ. To all of you that be joining with us this morning, we say welcome on the Facebook, on Facebook Live or via the Zoom conference lines. And as this is the first Sunday of the new year, we acknowledge those, some of those that be joining us as they shoot for perfect attendance this year, Pastor, amen? We see that Brother Derek Daly is joining us. Sister Karen Hall, all the lay servants, our first lady. Tippy guys now gets a sticker for joining us today. Sister Cindy Sue, Brother Romel, Mildred, Dra Mildred Jackson, Sister Jennifer Smith, Sister Delcine Greenfield, the Jenkins family, and the birthday girl is joining us, who we will talk more about, as well as cousins Melvin and Regina Kelly. We also have a very special guest in the house today, who you will hear more from this morning. Amen? Amen. Let me say on behalf of the ministry team, Happy New Year and God's blessings to each of you. Beloved, this morning, this first Sunday of the new year, I remind you, of how you made it through 2020 and how it will be possible to get through 2021. Jesus himself told us that he was the vine and that we are the branches. If we remain in him and he in us, we will bear much fruit. But apart from him, we can do nothing. Brothers and sisters, as pastor has told us, many people have started New Year's resolutions. But I invite you to add a new resolution and for you to begin just to try daily prayer and reading of the Lord's word so that you can stay connected to the vine. And if you are excited about the possibilities this year has through the power of Jesus Christ, I wonder if you'd give him a hand clap of praise this morning and simply say hallelujah. And with that, we will continue in the attitude of praise and worship with a selection. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I just want to let you know this morning that because God lives, you can also live. You can live whole. You can live holy. And you can live in the fullness of joy. The song just simply says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's with this new year. Because I know He holds my future. That's good news. And life is worth the living just because He lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, yes he did, heal and forgive, but greater still, that come ashore, this child can face uncertain grace because he lived because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lived all fear is gone because I know he holds my future your life is worth the living just 
because he lives. Take that into the new year with you. Because God lives. Hallelujah. I can face tomorrow because he lives. My fear is gone. God holds my future and my life is worth the living just because he lives last time because Jesus lives yes we can get through tomorrow because Jesus lives all fear is gone, yes, Lord, because I know God holds every one of our future, and your life is worth living just, your life is worth the living just, my life is worth Yes, because he lives. It's good to know that we can do everything because our Savior lives. As always, we thank you and remind you to continue your support of this ministry through the options that remain available to you. You can mail in your offerings here to 548 Queenstown Road. You can set up your online bill pay through your banking app to Metropolitan United Methodist Church in Severn. You can use the link on the church website or you can drop off your offerings in the drop slot in the finance room door. Just quickly, I want to remind each of you that this morning we will again be joining together and celebrating the love feast. So if you have not already done so, during the next uh, selection, we invite you to take that opportunity to prepare your bread, cracker, cookie, or what have you, and your drink for the love feast. Also, as a reminder, there will be COVID-19 testing here at Metropolitan each Thursday in the month of January that be January 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th. However, it will only be one hour from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. So please arrive early and take advantage of that opportunity. Lastly, I would not be doing my duty as a godson if I did not wish my godmother, Barbara Flanoy, a very happy and blessed birthday today. I pray that God bless you with many, many healthy and wonderful more birthdays. Amen. 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 And now for our special guest this morning, we are blessed to have with us lay servant Geraldine Griffin, who will be leading us this morning to the throne of grace in prayer. Amen. 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 Praise God in all of his glory. When I look back over 2020, and I say, thank God we made it over. Thank you, Lord. So I say, when you walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory we share on our way. 
while we do his great way in the light of the day what a glory we shed on our way while we do his good will we will burn And with all who will trust and go back, trust and obey, there is no other way but to be. And to trust and obey. A wise and merciful God, we come to you on this third day of the new year. And God is one for your blessings. We will not be here, but I thank you, God. Some of us have shed so many tears in 2020, but God, God, still allowed you to walk on for another day. So, God, I just thank you for the ones that trust you no matter what it looks like and what the world is going through, God, you allowed us to be here. So many families have shed so many tears as the loss of the loved ones, God, but you dried their tears and you let them know that you are there for them. So, God, I just want to thank you just say thank you is really enough for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. And I thank you, God, that you allowed us to see one more day. It shouldn't be. God, I ask that you just clear up this virus and just breathe on us the breath of life. Breathe on us, God, because when you read your scripture, there has been virus and fires all through this world. But God, you found a way to heal. And I know you're going to do this, God. And I thank you. And I ask right now, God, that you continue to give peace to the loved ones that have lost loved ones. Oh, God. Give them peace that can only... They can understand because it comes from you. I ask God that very soon, soon and very soon, you be able to open up the churches so we can come together and lift you up and praise you and glorify you for all the other things that you've done. I ask God that you continue to lead and guide the pastors and the ministers. Because even though the virus is here, they still found a way. Yeah. Still found a way to preach the word. Still found a way because God, that's what we need. We need your word to comfort us, to lead us, to guide us, to show us that although it seems dark, there is light because the light comes from Jesus. So God, I just thank you for the privilege and the honor of being able to speak your name, but to be able to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Call him, Lord. I, yeah, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
I thank you for the blessing and I thank you for the praise. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to come into this holy sanctuary one more time. God, I ask that you pour blessings out on this pastor, yeah. Reverend James Garnell, God said that, that he will continue mm -mm -mm, yes, to Lord. preach the word and the leaders of this church. Even though we have not been able to come and do what we need to do, but God, you have made a way. And I just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And I thank you, God, for your blessing. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just saying thank you is not enough, God, but I just want to say thank you anyway. And God, I ask that we join together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And I say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us all of our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, he's the power and the glory forever and ever. I say, amen. grace and mercy. We're going to be able to do that for you throughout this year. Amen? Amen. Amen. Truly good to have Sister Geraldine back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Now this morning, we turn now to our scripture lessons, our first lesson coming from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14, where Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace 
that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions to the praise of his glory. And our gospel lesson this morning coming from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verse 10 through 18. John 1, verse 10 through 18, where it records, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth, came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in, cl in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Brothers and sisters, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And following the selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of our own Reverend James Gosnell. Amen. God made me a promise. 
Brother Sheldon, do me a favor before he moves. I was on my way here this morning, and on the radio, I got to hear uh, Leandria Johnson, my sister, simply let us know that we were going through our Exodus season. Amen. And just for a little while, Sheldon, can you just give us just a little bit of that? Just a little, if you don't mind, please. Thank you. This morning at the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12, and they read this way in the time of King Herod after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in, warned in a dream not to return to her, they left 
for their own country by another road. My brothers and sisters, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God, thanks be to God. Um, let me just do some housekeeping and make some announcements. Um, not that you need to know this, but we all thought that since it was the first Sunday of the new year that we should come in and be dressed like we were coming to church, amen. And I believe, um, brothers and sisters, that because we had not been coming in dressed for church in so long, that the three of us who decided to put on our best church clothes this morning forgot that it takes just a little longer, amen, to get yourself right to come in looking this way. Um, I sent a text message to Brother Michael Sims and said, I'm running a little late. And when I got on the highway, Brother Sheldon sent me a text message that said I'm running a little late. And when I pulled up, Brother Michael had sent me a text that said, me too, I'm just pulling in. So I pray that as the year goes on, we get ourselves back together and do what the Lord would have us to do. This morning, if it's all right, I just want to sit right on that 12, right on and in that 12th verse and having been warned in a dream not to return to her, they left for their own country by another road. And for a few minutes, just want to talk about the text and the title. There's always another way. There's always another way. I was listening to Brother Michael for the last couple of weeks, and he's been talking about how long we have been doing service this way. And as I was sitting there, I thought to myself, yes, we too have realized that there's another way to do worship. For I remember when we first started, um, Brother Michael would get creative. He would have the green words, amen, for some of our members, and that word was mute. And isn't it good to know that we knew we had to do service another way so that we could eliminate having to tell everyone to mute. There's always another way that things can be done. Understand when I say the wise men knew what their assignment was, and that was simply they wanted to go see the baby Jesus for themselves and present him with their gifts. I ask this morning, do we long to see Jesus for ourselves? And when we are in his presence, do we present our gifts to him? And although this was the only thing they wanted to do, our good friend Herod had other plans for them. And I don't know about anybody else, but it amazes me when there are people who always want to take our plan and make it their own. You all think about that when you go home. Um, let's just talk about it here. I mean, we've had a whole lot of stuff that we had to redo. We had to add technology and it will amaze you sometimes when people get together and they begin to try to do what they feel is right. There's always one who's gonna come tell you what needs to be done, what should be done, what could be done. But when the work is ready to be done, they are nowhere, amen, to be found. They won't take your plan and make it their own, but they don't wanna put in the work. Uh, see, they always want to know what we're doing, but the reason is because they're looking for an outcome that has nothing to do with what we are attempting to do. Herod's curiosity about what the wise men were doing was simply so the plan he had could come to fruition. And so it's in this 12th verse that we read, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And I'd like to suggest it was none other than God who sent that dream to the wise men on this particular day. And, 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 and if we look at it, see, I believe there's not a time in our lives that Jesus doesn't know exactly what we are about to go through or what we are going through. And there are even times I believe that the Lord stops by and gives us direction or directions that we need to or should do. And it's here at times, unfortunately, brothers and sisters, where we mess up. After all, we sometimes begin to think we know what is best 
for us. There are times when we begin to think the only person who knows what is best for us is us. There are times when we begin to think when it comes to getting ahead in life, it's always because of us. But we need to remember if the Lord is the head of our households, then surely the Lord knows what we are going through. In fact, I feel confident enough to stand before us this morning and say the Lord already knew before this day came that each of us would be sitting, standing, and possibly in some cases laying here this morning. Some of you may be saying, did he just say laying here? I know some of y'all still home, amen, in your nighttime clothes, and you just, amen, that's it. I understand. And so some of us are sitting, some of us are standing, but some of us may be real comfortable. Uh, but it's good to know the Lord already knew what each of us would be dealing with before it even happened. But for whatever reason, there are some of us not only in this place, but all over who think when the Lord stops by in a word, vision, or dream that we hear or see it and simply say it is not what we need to do just for one thirty seconds i can tell you i fit that uh description amen i can tell you that um for those of you who think i wanted to be a pastor amen that was not my call um but isn't it good to know that the lord never gives up on us even when we give up on ourselves i need to do a sidebar right now brother allen if you're listening i know you have your phone turn the heat back up amen praise the lord that heat then drop down and we can feel it um, and turn it right back up. Um, I believe when we are praying people who always keep an, on, an open line with Christ, then he is always speaking to us. Now, don't get frustrated if your line is not open because that's something that's always subject to change. See, we all had times when the Lord attempted to call us and got a busy signal. If, if, he didn't get, if you didn't give him a busy signal, trust me, every now and then my line was busy. But it's good to know when we come to our senses, uh, it, it, it's, it's just real good then that the Lord's hotline is always available. I like to think of Jesus as 7-Eleven. He's a 24-7, never closed regardless of what the weather or the situation. Whenever you need him, he's right there. Uh, the wise men saw in their dream what was going to happen if they went back the same way they had come. But we should all be glad they paid attention to the directions they were given. I, I read and I know it's in the book, Melvin, our steps are ordered by God. Has the Lord stopped by lately and given us direction and for whatever reason we thought we had all the answers? Uh, see, this was just one instance where there was another way. Um, remember, if you will, the ram in the bush. That wasn't the original plan. Uh, remember uh, the, the ark that Noah made. Remember David in the, in, in the den. Amen. Come on, y'all. Remember the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Remember when David faced Goliath. If you don't remember, they tried to dress him up. In, in, in the soldier's outfit. But, but David said, I don't need this. All I need is some rocks and a slingshot. There's always another way. Uh, when Christ died on the cross for you and me, God was already making another way that was an outcome some did not see coming. See, I believe every time there's some bad, some mess, some trouble, some pain, some trials that are going on in our lives, the Lord is always making another way for us that is about to flip our world right side up. I believe there are times when the enemy comes our way, but the Lord has already assured us there is another way. I need y'all to understand a couple of things. I don't know what we did in 2020, because 2020 is gone. But this one thing I do know, whatever you did in 2020, we need to do something new in 2021. See, see, here, here's the thing. Think about it. There was a time when we probably said the only way we can do church is by coming in the building. But isn't it good to know that the Lord has now shown all of us there's another way. 
And not only is there another way, but if you do it right, trust me, the Lord said, I'll allow you to reach people that you've never reached before. Because when you get involved in this technology, believe me, people can jump on from all over the world. When I read the story of Christ dying on the cross, uh, I didn't read my name or yours, how we worked anything out with the Son of God. So what makes any of us think we can work anything out in our lives when the Lord has already told us what we needed to do? 2020 is gone. We complained. I'm saying we because we're supposed to be inclusive. We complained. Um, I heard on the news this morning there were parents. I'm not going to go in this long. I'm just going to look at the people who are with me who are upset because they think school needs to be open. And I heard a parent say that her second grader wants to go back to school. Now, I came from a household where I could have told my parents all I wanted that I wanted to go back to school. And then she said, I feel as though he should have options. When I was second grade, I think, Miss Jerry, I was seven. The only options I had was to get up out the bed, do whatever my parents told me to do, and keep it moving. I didn't put no money in the house. I didn't put no food on the table. I didn't have any options. The only option I had was do what they told me to do. And my father had that wonderful saying that said, do what I say, not as I do. I never heard of children having options. But oh, what a wonderful world we live in. See, when you have options, you ought to be able to do something to help that option come to fruition. She said her second grader was upset because he wanted to see his friends. But here's the question I would have asked her. But whose fault is it going to be if and when these children go back into the school and then they all come back home with this pandemic? Then what will we say? The one thing I've noticed about us is when trouble knocks on our door, then we want to complain. But as long as it doesn't touch us, see, there are a whole lot of people who this pandemic has touched. So they're not complaining. They're just trying to pray that the Lord will make a way somehow. And I truly believe today that as we go into this third day of 2021, I know without a doubt in my mind, there's going to be another way for us to do things in 2021. There's going to be a better way. There's going to be a, a, a more holier way. In fact, I, I'm going to share this because I, one of the lay servants who, as Michael said, was a guest today. She's not a guest. She was just invited, and I thank her for coming. Um, what you all don't know is the picture you see is the picture I can see, and I can joke with her because we've been together. You, you're right, Miss Jerry. I look a lot better than this looking at myself. Then, amen. Praise the Lord. I might have to do this a couple more times just to make amen. Yes. Um, Y'all turn that off so I can stop looking at myself and do what I need to do. I, 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 brought us, I brought this to us this morning because I, I need each of us to understand when the Lord speaks, we need to listen. Uh, we don't need to do anything the Lord tells us and then try to bring attention to ourselves. I hope y'all caught that. We don't need to do anything that the Lord tells us and then bring attention to what we just did. Just do it and keep it moving. The Lord says speak, we need to speak. The Lord says move or go another way, we need to move and go another way. The Lord says give more. See, I told y'all once a year I give this giving text. That's my giving sermon right there. The Lord says give more, we need to give more. I'm going to help y'all out a little bit more because I'm going to help the finance committee. If in 2020, for whatever reason, you looked at what you gave to the church and you saw three numbers that are lower than one, 50 cent, amen, is doing things another way. A dollar, amen, is doing things another way. I know times are hard. We understand that. But trust me when I tell you this. When you give it, you're really not giving it to the church. You're giving it back to the Lord 
who blessed us with it in the first place. I'm going to speak to y'all a little bit from personal experience. I, I used to get upset about that because I would say I keep giving this money to the church. And the church isn't doing anything with the money that I'm giving them. But then as I got older and I got wiser, I began to understand I wasn't giving it to give to the church. I was giving it because the Lord had blessed me with it. And I read for myself in the book, Sheldon, that it says I ought to bring my tithe, bring my best and give back to the Lord. So if I can't give the Lord a little bit of what the Lord has given me, that's my, um, that's my tithing sermon for the year. Amen. You'll never hear me talk about money again. But I need us to understand this. We serve a Savior that was born in a manger, in a stable. A Savior who healed the sick. A Savior who unstopped deaf ears. A savior who opened blinded eyes and raised the dead. But more than that, we serve a savior who hung on the cross for your sins and mine. There's always another way. We serve a savior who hung out in the tomb for three days. But on the third day, got up with all power in his hands. There's always another way. We need to remember we serve a savior that will go with us no matter where we are. Miss Geraldine, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In other words, take the attitude that you had in 2021 of saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it, and step into 2021 saying, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Sometimes we got to understand that we got to get down on our hands and knees or go into our secret place because the prayers of the righteous avail it much. We've come into a new year and I don't care what we're going through. I don't care where we are in our lives. I don't care how much trouble we came in here with because I know trouble don't last always. I came this morning to let each of us know just when things seem to be headed downhill there's always another way for those of you who get this um, for the last four years some of us may have may say that things were headed downhill but when the Lord gets in the middle see sometimes the Lord has to allow us I believe to be in the midst of some mess for those of y'all who like candy, you'll get this. m and M, amen. You got to be in the midst of the mess because the Lord wants you to sit there and marinate in it. But then watch how he'll make a way to make everything a little better. Now, I will say this. I don't believe that we're going to have a 360 degree turnaround and things are going to get better overnight. But what I do know is this, if God be for me, there's always another way. For the God we serve, the God we praise, the God we magnify and lift up, the God we say is an on-time God, the God who we say is our bridge over troubled water, the God who we say is our doctor and our lawyer, the God we say who can wipe away every tear always has another way for us to go. The wise men knew they couldn't go back the way they had come. We left 2020 and the Lord knows we can't come into 2021 the way we left out of 2020. I, I told you the other night if you were with us, you're going to have to leave some friends behind. You're going to have to leave some mess behind. You're going to have to leave some, 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 of, some of your uh, 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 endeavors, that's a good word, behind. You got to change some stuff. If we come into the new year doing the same thing that we were doing in 2020, I think the saying is um, when you keep on doing the same old thing, you keep getting the same results. If it didn't work in 2020, it ain't going to work in 2021. And for most of us, it didn't work in 2019. It didn't work in 2020. It's time to change some stuff. As we continue on in this new year, I pray we all remember there's always another way. 2021 doesn't have to look like 2020. 
what we do in 2021 can and should be totally different than what we did in 2020. But the thing is, it all begins with us. If I come in complaining, then more than likely I'm gonna have a terrible complaining year. But if I come in and say, you know what, I don't care what's going on, I'm gonna keep thanking the Lord in spite of everything. I'm gonna keep on doing what I need to do and know that the Lord will make a way somehow. I, I'm about to, uh, to hush up now and get out your way and we gonna go into the love feast. But I need people to understand, it amazes me how we allow things to mess up our mindset. I don't know how old any of us are who are listening, but this thing I do know, there are people now who aren't even making it to 21. There are people now who aren't even making it to 16. We have children who are going on to be with the Lord. So I just truly believe that if the Lord blesses you and allows you to wake up, then you got something to be thankful about. When I was younger, I used to look forward to the month of August, Lisa, because that's when my birthday is. But now I understand that every day I get up out that bed, it's a, it's a birthday and a blessing. Amen. Yeah. Because the Lord didn't have to do it. So stop waiting for big events and start being thankful in the small things. Um, I'm sure she's listening. Uh, my mother and I always get into this, this thing because, you know, as, as we get older, because I'm, I'm in this category, as we get older, we start having aches and pains that we didn't have when we were younger. Yeah. And um, probably over a year ago, I would ask my mother sometimes, how you feeling? Oh, well, you know this, oh, nah. So now she's at the point of understanding and saying, you know what, it doesn't matter what aches and pains I have. Right. At least I can feel the aches and pains that I have because somebody didn't get up this morning. And if the Lord got me up, then that's more than enough for me. Let's do things a different way in 2021. For every church out there, I pray that your whole church ministry, I pray that your church service, I pray that your church worship, I pray that your congregation becomes a different congregation in this new year because the Lord has stretched us and caused us to have to do things another way. And for that, we should be thankful. This morning, if you don't know Jesus as your personal and risen savior, I invite you this morning, wherever you are, to simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I wanna be saved. Give all your problems, your concerns, your worries over to Christ. Understand how when you give your life to Christ, you become a new creature, new creature and a new creation. And watch how with that new beginning, things will begin to change in your life. I don't know what you have in your life, but if you don't have Christ, then as far as I'm concerned, you don't have anything. Amen. So if you don't know him, today is your day. Uh, I heard Sheldon say, it's your season to be blessed. And trust me when I tell you, the Lord can do just that. God bless you. May heaven continue to shine and smile down upon you. Can we now go into our love feast? The love feast is a Christian fellowship meal, recalling the meals Jesus shared with disciples during his ministry and expressing the koinonia, that is the community, the sharing and fellowship enjoyed by the family of Christ. Unlike communion, one of the advantages of the love feast is that any Christian may conduct it. A major focus in the love feast are testimonies and praise. So for a few minutes, we ask everyone who is with us this morning just think of one thing that the Lord has done for you as we step into a new year. Just simply take a few minutes to thank the Lord for how good he has been. Can't we pray? Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored thy creatures bless and grant that we may 
feast in paradise with thee. Father of earth and heaven, thy hungry children feed. Thy grace be to our spirits given. That true immortal bread grant us and all our race in Jesus Christ to prove the sweetness of thy pardoning grace, the manna of thy love. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Walk with us. Talk with us. Give us a new praise, a new song in 2021. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, what would a love feast be without a passage of Scripture that speaks on the subject of love? So hear God's words from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, mm -hmm. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a, an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known, and, know faith, and now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. Can we now eat and drink as we think of how Christ loved us even before we loved him? How he loves us in spite of our faults and failures. But even more importantly, how he loved us so much he gave his life up for us so we could have life and have it more abundantly. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for being with us this week and Lord willing we will see you again next Sunday at the same time 10 o'clock, Metropolitan United Methodist Church, located at 548 Queenstown Road. Don't forget this week will be our COVID testing. And for those of you who will come, I will see you on Thursday. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen.